So I'm sitting there, barbecue sauce on my titties. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Suki friends, to the first ever edition of Crips and Corks on Court. Burr, burr, burr. I'm your host, DJ. With your co-host. Oh, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> you usually say with your I know. Oh, It's so okay. I, we had a little of the drink last night. Drink was taken. And drink is being taken. Right at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. No, no, it's like 9. Well, we are still recovering from last night's shenanigans. It was a Saturday night. We went to bed at 9.30. We did. <laughs> See, I drank and got a little headache, so I had to bounce out. I had to, uh, yeah, bow out early. What can you do, you know? I had two White Claws. Right. I had, well, actually, I had three White Claws. We had the wine. I had rum and Coke. I was purposely trying to my, make myself sound like a sad, lightweight. Oh, for the, my story, bad. for the story, because it's a lot funnier if it's like, I had two white claws when I was in bed at 9.30. <laughs> but no, no, we did start drinking at like right. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We did do that. But today we're going to do a mukbang style uncorked. Basically what this is going to be is we have topics that we can't really talk about on the podcast because there isn't enough time and we want to like focus on the spooky stuff on the podcast. So this is kind of like our opportunity to talk about things we can't really talk about on the podcast. Just share with you all a little more our personal lives and what we're like when we're not on the podcast. <laughs> right, right. But why don't we get into the mukbang yeah. part? Show the people um, the food. What did so we get? We got chicken tenders from Permanis. Mm -hmm. um, Permanis is a really well-known Pittsburgh restaurant known for their sandwiches using thick cut Italian bread. Um, and then they do meat, and they do homemade slaw and french fries on it, and that's a Permani sandwich. Um, but we got chicken tenders because Paul wanted wings, but we, um, and I was going to get chicken tenders, and we agreed that chicken tenders was easier to <laughs> eat on camera. So yes. let's begin. While you're doing that, pulling that out, I'm going to just real quick turn off the heat. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so we got ranch, because you can't eat chicken without ranch. And then, I have no idea what this is. What is it? I don't, wait. Girl, is that honey mustard? I love honey wait, mustard. Wait, you got the extra, extra hot sauce? Yeah. Wait. Did they put my hot sauce on the side? They, they did. did. <laughs> we ordered, like, why, why did we, why did we need a sauce? Of, okay. Wait, hold up. Didn't we order, like, when you ordered... What did it say? It said, like, what do you want your flavor to be? Well, yeah, what do you want your flavor? I want these to be tossed in the sauce. Why are they not tossed in the freaking sauce? Like, what's going on, Permantes? And you know what? This isn't even enough to cover the fucking freaking chicken tenders. Like, yeah. what is going on? So what you're going to do, Paul, take the french fries out and put them on the plate, leave the chicken tenders in there, sprinkle the sauce in there, and just give it a shake. Oh, jeez. It's DIY. It, it's literal DIY. I'm not. I'm I'm fine with plain chicken tenders. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Okay, guys. We're going to get into it. While we're doing this, let's get into our first topic. Do you want me to go first while you DIY? Yeah, you go first. Okay. My first topic was on our live stream. I mentioned... Um, Oh, wait, shit. We talked about this on the episode we recorded yesterday. Okay, well, you're just getting a double take. Period. That's fine. Um, I mentioned, like, out of nowhere that in my past life, I believe I was Jackie Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And just breezed past it. Tell us more about that. Um, so when I was really little, at one point, I looked my mom in the eyes and I said, I'm tired of being a boy. I want to be a girl again. And she said, what do you mean, be a girl again? And I looked at her and I said, I was a girl in heaven. And then the Blessed Mother said, I have to be a boy. That's kind of spooky, honestly. You were talking to Mary herself, the Blessed Mother? Uh, according to three-year-old DJ. Hmm. Um, there was also one time when I was really little where I said, like, I hope when I get married, my marriage is happy this time and doesn't at all end up all sad. Oh, that's actually really... Was their marriage actually sad? I mean, JFK did cheat on her a lot, and then, like, he had his brains blown out all over her Chanel suit. <laughs> you have extra, extra hot sauce dripping down your face. 
Not the Chanel suit. It was actually a knockoff Chanel suit. Damn. It's not that she couldn't afford Chanel. It's that as America's First Lady, she was like, I shouldn't be buying French clothes. Okay, that makes sense. I get that. I get that. Now, She's staying true to the brand. And brand, staying true to the brand is something I very much appreciate. Um, how are your wings now that you DIY them? They're pretty good. They're not as hot as I would have liked. Because I'm someone who likes spicy stuff. And they're really not even that hot at all. I got the extra, extra hot. Really not even hot at all. And that's what's going on, Permantis. We need answers, Permantis. We're adding you guys in the comments after this. What is going on, Permantis? This is not spicy at all. I am so disappointed. Which, if you guys don't know, getting into my next topic, a cure for spiciness sometimes. If something's too spicy, you can eat or drink something with milk in it, dairy, that's supposed to make it feel better. And speaking of dairy, my one friend, Megan, had a dream about me, right? I was at her Christmas party or something, apparently, and I brought her oat milk because apparently lesbians love to drink oat milk. And then I hopped on my um, hoverboard. You guys remember those hoverboard things, like the two wheels and everything? And I, after I gave her the hoverboard, like after I gave her the oat milk, I got on this hoverboard, crouched down, and just flew into the distance on my hoverboard. And she promptly called me the lesbian oak milk goblin. And you know, that's pretty accurate, because I would consider myself a lesbian oat milk goblin who gives oat milk to all the deserving lesbians <laughs> across the land. I'm sorry, I'm trying so hard not to lose it. Lose it's iconic. Clutter, but it's so funny. <laughs> you told me the story, and it's just as funny the second time. I'm a lesbian oat milk goblin. Get into it. <laughs> That needs to be one of our t-shirts. We stan our lesbian <laughs> fans. And I'll bring you all oat milk. <laughs> if I ever do meet and greet, I'm bringing you all oat milk. Oh but only God. for the lesbians. You have to bring your lesbian card to prove it. <laughs> what kind of milk do... Never mind. Getting into... I was going to say, what kind of milk do gay men drink? And then I was like, we're not going to get into that. Oh, we know what kind of milk they be drinking, honey. You get on Muscle that. milk. Exactly. Muscle milk. Or if you go to the SeanCody.com. Hey, this internet. is YouTube. <laughs> on God's internet. <laughs> no. Oh, I love ranch and fries. Oh my God, I'm so wet. That's so good. Stop saying you're wet, Paul. Their fries are not crispy at all. For Manti, usually for Manti is really good, so I'm a little disappointed today. For well, Manti. also, she had to drive 30 minutes. It wasn't the Pimani's here. She wouldn't like to the original one in the strip district. Mm. We did not know that. It's We ordered chicken at not 8 o'clock in the morning. That's true. Now, along the side, same lines as liquids. If you watch the live, I had a very um, inappropriate story I couldn't tell on Facebook Live. And this involves Gatorade. I heard a story one time of someone, one of my friends... I can't say who. They lost their virginity in a McDonald's parking lot, and they used Gatorade as lube. Could you imagine? Because Gatorade, it's not making nothing slippy. Yes, it's a liquid, but <laughs> they used Gatorade in the McDonald's parking lot as lube. Can you imagine? What in the Brokeback Mountain? Now, Brokeback Mountain didn't have, like, any sort of lube that they just, like, spit, you know? Hey. But... Girl, Gatorade as lube, it's a no for me. Do you have a favorite lube brand? Do you presume I have sex regularly? I prefer Jiffy Lube. Oh my god. I'm gonna go back in the bag. <laughs> so You do know that there's a very good chance that my grandparents are gonna watch this. And that's okay. Hi, Grandma and Grandpa. You're we call them Nanny and Pap. Nanny and Pap, hi. Sorry, my family's a little more formal, so we, I've called them, no, I called my grandfather Pappy and my grandma Grandma, and then the other one is Grandmother and Grandfather. No, I just out of nowhere started calling them Nanny and Pap. Well, no, mm -hmm. Pap is like, my mother called her grandfathers both Pap, mm -hmm. but both of her grandmothers were Grandma. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, I just started calling my grandma Nanny. 
Oh, okay. Don't know where. It just, just I happened. did, and it caught on. Um, speaking of my grandparents, very funny story happened the other day with them. Mm-hmm. They had lunch with my grandmother's cousins, and they came home, and I took my evening 15-minute break, Mm -hmm. see how they were, get a little bite to eat, because I don't like to eat when we get off at 8, and we're talking, and, well, first I came out of my grandfather's the bathroom, and my grandmother goes, he's drunk, and I go, okay, so what? Um, and then she comes out, he comes out and I'm like, Hey, are you having trouble? She's like, and, um, they're sitting there. My grandmother goes, so my cousin, Paul, his daughter, Chelsea is getting married. And my grandfather goes, Paul, your grandmother's cousin's daughter, Chelsea's getting married. Oh my God. And my grandmother goes, I just said that. Um, he's hoping not to spend a boatload on the wedding. Paul's really hoping it's a cheap wedding. Oh my God. (laughs) And just for five minutes, my grandmother's trying to tell me the story and my grandfather's just repeating it slightly different and louder. Iconic, really. And I really don't want to go back to work because I wanted to like get him to do the Gettysburg address or something. Oh my God. That's what DJ does. He, when his grandparents are drunk, he makes them recite historical speeches. No, actually, when they're because I'm the child of two alcoholics, most times if they get too drunk, I lock myself in my bedroom so I don't have to deal with the childhood trauma. That's on trauma, kids. Speaking of childhood trauma, <laughs> is it more tra- traumatic than using Gatorade as lube? Oh, yeah. Could you imagine? That's crazy to me. Like, could you even imagine, bitch? Like, and also, moving on to the next topic, our New Year's Day, well, not New Year's Day, it was New Year's Eve when we were in the club, and I had recently saw on TikTok that um, if you eat 12 grapes at New Year's, like, at midnight, it's good luck. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Your chicken tenders are tenders. This is a turd. Oh my gosh. It like, it's so clear. small. It's so small. Where's the real chicken tender? I will say, the chicken tenders are crispy. They look good. Oh, they're delicious. It's just, I want a bigger one. Right, right. No, the chicken tenders are crispy and good. The fry, excuse me, I'm so sorry. But the fries, not so much. So, back to the grapes. Apparently, if you eat grapes on New Year's, it's supposed to be good luck. Party. So, we'll get a man. I bring, I bring grapes to the club on New Year's Eve. So I have a pocket full of grapes at the club. Are we surprised at this point? Like, if you're a longtime viewer at the pod, like, you know not to be surprised about shit like this at this point. Now, so at midnight, DJ and I, we go under the table in the club. So everyone's, like, cheering, and we're sitting under the First table. First of all, you're cutting off so many good parts of the story. Okay, you go. First of all... They were in a Ziploc baggie in his pocket. He was not free-balling those grapes. Second of all, the club was so packed that we couldn't climb under a table in the club, so we had to go outside to the patio in the cold and rain to climb under a patio table to do this. We did. We were outside in the cold, the rain, the elements, doing all of this. And so (laughs) we were sitting in the club. It struck midnight, and we did our little thing i prayed to hecate and then g sorry dj and then dj went paul's like please mother hecate and i'm like and jesus and he's he's like please embod us with your maidenly and i'm like and savior right right so trying to bless our beliefs (laughs) but it was so funny because paul keeps going mother hecate and i go and jesus yes and that's on multi-religion multicultural um polytheistic polytheism we're a polytheistic partnership exactly polytheism so we're those weird kids at the club that's sitting under the table eating grapes and you know what if you ain't doing that you need to get on our level because that's low-key iconic upon telling that story again i think the weirdest part of it is not me saying and jesus but us sitting under a table yeah, the weirdest part is us sitting under the table. People are probably like, what I didn't is realize that, that until this moment doing? when we were telling the story. <laughs> no, the weirdest part is us sitting under the table. 
What's our next topic? Isn't it mine? I think so. Making a drunk grandfather. Red Lobster Did and the try... Pussy Biscuits. Can mm -hmm. I say that? I think so, yeah. I went to Red Lobster for the first time last week. That's not honey mustard. That's garlic. I know. I got garlic parm because remember they wouldn't let me get plain. I almost put a whole fry in there thinking it was honey mustard and it's garlic. I'm going to end it all. I'm going to try it with the um, I don't want to do that. Maybe another time. But back to your Red Lobster biscuits. My mouth is full. Yeah. So, yeah. DJ had Red Lobster for the first time. He went without me. I've had red lobster before. You're allergic to shellfish. They have chicken. I can still eat the chicken. <laughs> you went to go see some RuPaul drag queen. Drag race queen. Yeah, I did meet Denali. She was exactly very nice. So. Well, he was doing that. Us, me and my friend Dan, our friend Dan, went to Red Lobster because I had a gift card. And it was my first time at Red Lobster. Mm-hmm. And you just walk in, and you really are absorbed by the beachy nautical feel of it, which I really appreciated. Living in Pittsburgh, which we're nowhere near a beach. T T. I I really felt I was on the seashore. Seashore? In a chain restaurant. And then you have the tanks with the lobsters. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to be able to pick my own lobster I have for dinner. Yeah. Just be able to look in the eyes and be like, you're going to be in my tummy. You're coming home with me. <laughs> like picking up but, some poor twink at the end of the night. <laughs> Unlike you, Paul, I do not just loom over poor unsuspecting twinks and go, you're coming home with me. How is that kidnapping charge going, by the way? I have never done that, ever. Everything has been consensual. Consent. I saw you had a mouthful and I was like, I'm going for it. I'm making the bad joke. Consent is key, kids, and I have never done that. Consent is necessary every time, every fucking time. Period. Cheers um, to my 9 a.m. wine. But no, I did not get to pick my lobster out because you have to pay market price. And what if that lobster was $50? Ooh, okay, that makes sense. Like, what if that one lobster was $50? Well, like, pick out the $50 lobster. Go for it. Dude. No, because I suddenly had a $50 gift card. Oh, we were on that gift card budget, y'all. Um, so instead, I got steak and lobster tail. Mm. And those cheddar baked biscuits. Oh, oh my God. I saw the <laughs> face of God. Angelic choirs sang... Better than sex. I'm gonna have to give them a try sometime. I've been oh had... my god. And they're like covered in fresh herb butter. Oh. I haven't had red lobster in a long time, so I'm gonna have to give their biscuits a retry because last time I had them was not too impressed, honestly. Although, and Poe can attest to this because we met up with him later on the night, the red lobster did not agree with me, and I spent most of the night in the bathroom. Team. My See? demons entered the chat. I'm a red lobster. Not a red lobster. I'm an olive garden girly. I love the olive garden. If you no. take me anywhere, take me to the olive garden. Because that's the tea. I like the breadsticks on the salad. Mm. But I don't know if it's because I've been to Italy and I've tried real Italian food or... No, because I do like Italian food here. It's just like... With... And I... My grandmother's Italian, so like we do go to a lot of like good Italian restaurants. Mm -hmm. And like... You can taste the quality difference. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's like... I think it's just like it being a chain. Right, right. I like some chains, but like not all chains. Um, speaking of, another really good story to talk on here is when I had an exorcism in the prayer circle. Oh, I forgot about that. I know, so oh my God. until this moment. Oh, um, story. So this... Oh my God, this is iconic. So... Paul and I were going um, on a day trip to where he's from down in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And before we left, he had to return. No, you had to pick up a book from the library. Yeah. She's a reader. Tell your friends. And She's literate. the library was closed. Like, we got there a little too early. Mm hmm And... Just keep going. Okay. <laughs> the phone's still recording. Um, so, right next door is a church. And there's a little garden mm -hmm. 
not like flower beds and stuff, but like a nice lawn and trees and bushes. And set in stones is this circle and it's this, it's called the maze and you're supposed to go through it and meditate on what you're looking for by doing the maze. Mm -hmm. And imagine that because it's a Christian church that Jesus is with you and what are you trying to get out of it? And um, it's like 8.45 in the morning. We're both hungover. Mm -hmm. And me and Paul are like, okay, let's do it. And we're doing it. And we actually like sort of did it a race because it's set out as stones and like there's a path to like walk in between them. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that, but Paul was like walking on the stones. Right, right. Or no, you start from the middle. Girl, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know. But we were like racing each other, like being very immature as we do. And we do it, like we do the whole prayer circle. I kept calling it a prayer circle and not like the maze. Mm -hmm. Because it is a circle. It's a labyrinth. Labyrinth, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and we get out of the circle, and I go, Paul, I, I really don't feel so hot. And he's like, Are, like, what's wrong? And I was like, I don't know. Like, suddenly, I just don't feel so good. And I said, will you excuse me? I'm going to go behind that tree over there. And I walked behind the tree. And for the first time in about five years, I puked. I know. So we're just sitting there outside this church and DJ's just <laughs> vomiting, puking in the bushes. And when I say vomiting, like I tried to like do the graceful, like hands on the knees, bend over. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad that I like threw myself down onto my knees in right. the dirt. And I'm like, <laughs> it's <laughs> not a clue. Anymore. I'm like, <laughs> at like 8 a.m. Broad daylight. Everyone and their kids can see. There's like... a farmer market going on across the street. Right. <laughs> And I get done, Mess. and I walk Messy. over to Paul, and he goes, I didn't know you were so, so hungover. And I go, that happened right after we did the prayer circle. What if the prayer circle just exercised my demons? I mean, because it, it was immediate. Have. It was Jesus. immediate. Mm -hmm. I felt fine. Like, I had a headache, but, mm -hmm. like, my stomach is fine. And then it was like, boom, there it is. <laughs> that's a good story. <laughs> that is a good one. And that's the story of my exorcism. So, let's get into our last topic today, which is caffeine. So, if you know me, I don't drink a lot of caffeine. If I need caffeine, I'll drink a Diet Coke, right? Because it gives me anxiety, and I don't like the feeling of my heart racing. It gives me more anxiety, so I just don't drink caffeine. But I've been working so many hours lately that I have ventured into coffee, right? So, coffee for me is black coffee with a ton of ice in it so it waters down and I have to sip it. So one like full cup of coffee lasts me an entire day. So I'll just sip it throughout the day. And you know what? I used to be pretentious about coffee. I used to be like, no, I'm unique. I don't drink coffee. I'm just like quirky. I don't drink caffeine, but I'm sold now, okay? I'm gonna be a coffee girly once I work up my tolerance because I have zero tolerance to caffeine. Caffeine just makes me so anxious. I think I'm going to be a coffee girly. See, it's cute to be quirky. I'm like, I don't like coffee. But you also don't like tea. And thank God you dr drink like Diet Coke and booze. Mm -hmm. Because I was talking to one guy and I was like, let's get a drink. And he's like, mm, I don't drink. And I was like, okay, let's grab coffee. And he was like, I don't like coffee. And I was like, um, tea. And he's like, I don't drink tea. And I was like, hot Bitch. chocolate. And he's like, I don't like hot drinks. And I was like, do you want to get a glass of water and take a walk? And he's like, can't we have dinner? And for some reason, I don't like going to dinner on first dates. Neither do I, It's honestly. too much pressure. And I have stomach issues, so like going to dinner, it's a very risky thing for me. I hate going to dinner, and that's what everyone wants to do. Like, literally everyone. And I feel like when you get food, it gives you a very good excuse to not talk. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Like, you can just get silent and, like, be eating. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, like, coffee, it forces us. Like, we sit across from each other, we're forced to talk. Right, right. But also, there's, like, a lot of pressure in that. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but, like, I don't know. There's just something that's so much pressure about, like, a first date and having to talk and keeping the conversation going. And then if there's any silence at all, I feel so awkward. As you should, because that is a fucking interview. I am right. interviewing you. I am making sure you are worthy of this. Oh my god. I say in the hoodie that I wore yesterday and I slept in. 
<laughs> As we're hungover drinking wine. I am and not hungover. Room. I mean, I'm not hungover either, but we're, it's fake eight or news. nine. Man. Okay, Kellyanne Conway, fake news. Oh my God, don't compare me to her. Kellyanne Conway wishes. <laughs> she okay. does wish. But You're ten times the woman she is. Thank you. I do my best. It's just hard being so tiny and small and pretty. Oh my god. As I have my fucking beard hair or whatever. My five o'clock shadow. <laughs> On that note, let's call it. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the first Crips and Quirks Uncorked. If you have any food you'd like us to try, drop it down below. We'll have our socials all down below. Go follow everywhere. Um, and join us next month for our next edition of Crips and Corks on Court. And until then, keep your Crips tight and your Corks loose. Bye. Bye. That was a really good clink. <laughs>